Hi, this is Sam Botstein for TractorSkills.com. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and check us out at TractorSkills.com. In today's tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to use loops inside of Remix Dex in Tractor. In a previous tutorial, we actually made this very Remix deck, and I'll post a link in the description below. What we've done is we've actually turned all of the different clips into different loops, and we have it set up such that one row here is a complete pattern, and we've basically chop that pattern into four different parts, those being the sort of kick and bass, the snares, the hats and shakers, and so forth, and everything else. Other than one-shot sounds, you know, sort of like sample decks, the kind of playing an air horn over a track kind of thing, the most obvious way to use the remix sets that I can think of is one of the first ways I saw people using them in clubs and in DG sets and that was to essentially just do an Ableton Live style clip launching thing. Now, if you just launch this whole row at the same time, and then launch the whole next row at the same time, you know, there really isn't a lot of point. You could have done that with a regular track deck and cue points, or you could have just put, you know, all four of those things in one slot and just pressed one button to move between patterns. But we, what we can actually do here that we couldn't do necessarily in side of one pattern on one group on machine, or you know many other different solutions like track decks and tractor, is to actually mix between different parts of different patterns on the same track. And in order to do this, we actually have a individual fader and filter for each of the four columns. So let me give you an example of that. In order to do this kind of thing, what I recommend is to turn the quantization up. You can do this by pressing quant, on your control F1 and turning the encoder to select the quantization you want. So this actually has a pretty even sound to it. We're able to mix between different parts of the same track and do so with individual sounds or little subgroups. This gives us a lot of control, but we can actually take this a lot further. So this clip launching thing has been around for a long time. Certainly just about everybody who's DJed with Ableton has done this, but Tractor actually includes some really interesting features that we can take advantage of right here. So if we look at our shift layer, if we just hold down shift on our control F1, what we have going on is we have these controls which are per column. These don't apply to individual clips. They don't apply to the whole remix deck. They actually apply just to that column of that set. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn on punch across the bottom for all of these different di clips and we don't, need it right now, it's not going to make a difference, but I like to leave key lock on for this kind of thing. What we're actually able to do now is we can evenly switch between these different patterns as before, except now it doesn't re-trigger them. So if I turn uh, punch off for a second and I turn my quantization way down, you'll see that I'm able to just re-trigger and in fact can only re-trigger by using the pads here. So when I switch the different patterns, it's going to always start from the beginning. When I hit the same pattern again, it's going to just restart that pattern. So this is only useful to a certain degree. If we turn punch back on, we can actually switch to different patterns and do this in phase so that the patterns actually change without restarting and we can keep everything right in phase the way it was.
So this is actually potentially very powerful. As you can sort of hear, you can very easily create little juggles by moving to different clips during the clip's playback. One other thing that we can do is we can go ahead and use the effects switch here. By turning the effects on for one individual column, we can actually do things with effects that were actually difficult or required a lot of finesse or were completely impossible on regular track decks. This should give you an idea of what I mean. I'll just turn the effects on for the hats and nothing else. As you can see here, I have everything routed such that we should be sending to effects three and four, and I'm using a control X1 to actually control that. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn the delay on here with the dry wet just about at center and the delay just about at center. And you're going to hear that I can actually affect the hats with this delay while leaving everything else completely dry. So this is really very powerful as well. We're able to actually isolate a individual column and affect that column and not the other columns. The other thing that's possible to do here is to actually, in real time, live, control which things are being sent to the effects. So if I turn uh, these to maybe a more reasonable position, but one that's very clear, you can hear that we can do some really dramatic things with this. So that was generally a mess, but you could hear that it was very clear, and if you have the right effects chain at the right time, in the right mix, it can really be a powerful tool. Of course, you can combine all of these different concepts with hands-on use of the faders and filters. For one, it sounds really, really nice to use a hi-hat with a delay through a filter. Here's what that can be like. So this is a lot of fun and a really quick and easy way to create big washing effects. One other quick example would be any of the really dynamic macro effects. These were introduced along with the Control z 2 and typically do one thing in one direction and something else in another. So we could take our everything else loop, I'm going to do it out of context without everything else playing. Uh, that is the first three columns playing just for this example, but you could actually do things with that loop and leave everything else alone. So using all these things together, you can actually create some really dynamic things. 
it might seem silly if you come from vinyl or you know maybe a more traditional style of DJing to come to the tractor and show up at the club with you know three and four controllers perhaps to control all of these different parameters but really if you're doing stuff with simple loops that you want to be able to have real hands-on control over tractor is a really great solution for this before we move on from using loops in the remix decks i'm going to finish out this tutorial by just mentioning that you can actually use any of the typical deck controls that you would expect to use with track decks on remix decks what do i mean by this so there's actually a flux mode meaning that when you uh, engage things like loops and whatnot and let go that you'll be in phase with where you expect it to be. Also, you can use the looper inside of Remix X, and here's what that's like. Here's what can happen if you actually have flux on for something like that. This way, your clips will play and then continue where they would have been playing had they not been interrupted by one of your movements. So you get the idea, using the loop controls on something like the Control X1 and Flux Mode, you can actually keep your clips all going in phase. And you can actually use this Punch Mode to change out what's being looped under the overall loop length. That's a little bit hard to explain, so I'm just going to show you. If we turn Punch on and do the same kind of thing with looping, we'll actually be able to move the material that we're looping out from under itself. Please let me know in the comments if you use this in any of your shows or your mixes. One last thing I wanted to mention is that in a future tutorial, we'll actually combine DVS, you know, full vinyl control, with using loops like this in Tractor. Once again, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube for all our Tractor tutorials and check us out at TractorSkills.com.